What's up gang, welcome to The Lost Boundary. Uh, on the last video you met the crew um, and on this video I just want to take you inside and start off as we mean to continue. So I want to introduce you to all the different processes uh, so you guys that haven't got a clue about casting or are wanting to know a little bit more about casting or mold making or any sort of process that we do here, I just want to take you through each and individual process just so you get a little bit of a sense of what order we're at when we're casting sculpture. Because there's nothing worse for you to be tuning in halfway through a process of making a specific sculpture and you're not really knowing where we're at. So I just want to start this video off by going around talking to the guys and just seeing what they're up to. So follow me. This is little Ziggy. He's not so little anymore. He's, uh, he's a hunt away, New Zealand sheep herding dog. Absolute beauty and uh, growing every day. All right, gang, so before any casting takes place, this is where sculpture begins its journey to being a tangible bronze or bronze resin. In order for us to get that far, we need to make a silicon mold. So under these green blobs, if you like, are our original sculptures. So some, you can, you can mold anything from clay, plaster, metal, anything you, you wish to mold, it can be molded. Um, but under here is, is a sculpture, as I said. So we're covering each piece in a silicon rubber to take the negative of the positive. So what I'm saying is this rubber is taking all of the detail of your sculpture and then once you've built up your desired thickness, we then go over with a fiberglass jacket to hold this rubber in place so it holds its form. From there, we use this mold to then cast a wax or a fiberglass uh, with all your different metal composites, but we'll get to that process in another video. Um, so I just want to introduce you to the first process of sculpture being cast. So once the mold's been made, we bring it upstairs. And then Vera, she then casts the wax into that mold to make a positive of the sculpture that you want to cast into bronze. Down here, you can see that Vera started casting in a wax into the mold to then get the positive of this particular piece. So this is gonna be then bolted together and then what we call slush cast. So we get molten wax. Once the mold's been bolted up, we put, we slush the, we pour wax into the mold, move it around, and then it basically seals both edges giving you both halves that have adhered together. Once we've pulled those sections out, Farrah then takes time to just fettle the edges and get rid of any seam lines using white spirit and a little bit of heat. And then she blends in and sculpts back in those seam lines. So then you're left with the original cast. So what Vera is using to patch up all the seam lines is a little bit of heat using a blowtorch, a sculpting tool, and a bit of white spirit just to blend in uh, all the wax. And it just gives it that little bit of softness which some of the sculpture requires. And the wax we're using is this red patching wax. It's really soft in your hand and you can literally get a little bit on the end of your tool and then you can just then go over to the seam line and just patch in any holes that we may have missed when casting in the wax and then just blending it in uh, and just trying to keep it within that seam line because when you bolt and slush cast the mold it basically leaves a little bit of flashing so we take away that flashing so this is the flashing here and you can see it's very thin I can just knock it back uh, and from there it's a little bit of rough around the edges so we get a little bit of white spirit we dip the tool in white spirit and we just blend it in uh, but not trying to like sort of go too far wide you just gotta stay within your line and within the seam line uh, so yeah yeah, I'm going to hand this back to Vera now because she's doing a cracking job. Does it better than I do. Uh, so I'm going to leave her to do that and then we'll come back once it's ready to tree up. Okay, so before they go downstairs into the shell investment room, they get what we call treed up. Now we've got this pouring cup here and then you have your vents, your gates, uh, and these allow the gases in the airs to escape out of the top of the cup once the bronze has been poured. So you have your main sculpture or pattern on top. You then wax weld your gate to the bottom or wherever you're gonna feed the bronze into. And then you basically put in your vents where air will struggle to get to. So for, for instance, this beak is quite long and thin and it'll be quite difficult for bronze to get up to the very tip of the beak. So we then add a vent so that the air can then travel through the beak up the uh, vent into the top of the cup. So once we dip this in, uh, this is just a paper cup and it's really great because once you put it in the kiln, this paper cup just burns away and the wax then um, 
comes out of the cup, not causing any stress on the shell itself. Uh, because basically, if you have a solid cup and you haven't pre-burnt that wax out and you stick it in the kiln, all the wax melts at different temperatures between this wax and this wax and it expands and it's got nowhere to go. So it wants to come out to the surface and can give you cracks in your shell. And if you don't see them when you pour bronze, we have a problem. So once the waxes are all treed up and all fettled and looking lovely, we come into this room, which is where the shell investment takes place. And once our waxes have all been treed up and mounted on their pouring cups, they then get dipped into this ceramic slurry, which is from a company called Remit, and it's called Remisol Just Dip. So it's a suspended slurry. All I need to do with the suspended slurry is mix it up in the morning and it's good to go all day. And then, but normally there's some old solutions where you have to constantly keep the solution oscillated. It's expensive electricity bill. So it gets dipped into the ceramic slurry, then it comes over to your fused silicas. We've got three different grades, fine, medium and coarse. And it's basically, you're building up the layers of the ceramic to then get your desired thickness on all of your shells. And as you can see, all these running systems. So if I just show you here, look. In here is a wax covered in ceramic. This is your main pattern, and behind is like a, is a system. So if you imagine, the bronze travels down this gate here into these outlets, filling your sculpture, and then the air then gets pushed up out of these vents so that we don't get any air locks and that we get a 100% pure cast. So once this is all ready and we've got our desired thickness, we've got all of these fans, sorry I digress, we've got these fans blowing air onto the sculptures so that the, uh, all the pieces dehydrate. So they go from this yellow color and they finally turn to this lovely golden orange. And when it's this color, we're ready to dip again. But from here, once they're ready, we go to the kiln for the burnout. So from the shell room, once all the shells are ready, they then get put into this big old kiln, which is lined with fire blanket. So this is a fire retardant blanket, which insulates the kiln. And, the, and the, what happens is, the burner gets put on, you then preheat your kiln to about 700 degrees, and then once that kiln's hot enough, you then put your shells inside, and then the wax then disappears from the shells out of this little funnel into a saucepan. And then once they're ready, in there about an hour, once they're ready, all the shells are nice and white and cured, and then they're ready for pouring. So once the shells are all been ready and they've been burnt out and they're nice and hollow and cured, we then preheat those shells back in the kiln before we pour. And this is the heart of the foundry, where the magic happens, the furnace. This is a 60 kilo pot, and uh, this is a homemade furnace made out of an old stainless steel uh, beer keg, and uh, absolutely love it. It's powered by a ribbon burner. So ribbon burners are traditionally used in forges, and normally are used and powered on a downward force, but this is on a horizontal force and they primarily work best by back pressure. So if the lid's off, it's not that powerful, but if you whack the lid on and push the flames back, it's really, really powerful. And this furnace gets up to about 1500 degrees uh, and, that, and that is enough to melt anything. So this, guys, is our crucible, our 60 kilo pot. Um, it's actually made of ceramic, so it can withstand temperatures up to 1600 degrees. Um, and these are our bronze ingots. I mean, they look like bronze ingots, uh, gold ingots, but these are our bronze ones. We pop our bronze ingots into our crucible. We place it inside the furnace. We then chuck a little bit of fired uh, cardboard and then we ignite the furnace, turn the gas up and let that melt down. It normally takes about an hour for the hole to get a full pot of molten bronze. Um, so with that information we can then gauge how long the shells need to be in the kiln for as well. Basically, we then put our furnace on, that's all getting nice and hot. And we've got our lovely lifting gear over here. Uh, and then what we do is once the, once the bronze is ready, we then get the lifting gear, we take it over to the furnace, we lift out our molten metal into the pouring shank. And then this pouring shank houses the crucible, we then lock it in place. And me and another guy, we lift, the, we lift the shank, 
and pour into the shells. Absolutely magical. The most majestic process I've ever done. So this is the heart of the foundry uh, where the magic happens. So the reason why we have a sand pit, ladies and gents, is because we like to uh, submerge the shells and keep an equal pressure uh, around the shell so when you pour your metal into it it can't really expand that much and it, it sort of refrains it from cracking or exploding but in America crazy guys they don't actually use sand they just chain them up and hope for the best so but here in this foundry we like to submerge the shells in the sand to try and refrain from any discrepancies or any explosions or cracks so once the bronze has been poured in the shells and it's cooled down it's actually the shell then gets bashed off with a hammer and then what Darren's doing over there is just cutting off the runners and the risers and the pouring cup and then we're going to clean up all that shell with a wire brush and a sandblaster to get all the bonds out and make it look really clean so then once that's all done it can then all be welded together if needed to be and then fettled in so all the weld lines are going to be fettled in with a Dremelin tool. And I'll just take you over to the welding bench now and show you where that takes place. So once we've cast everything and it's all been ground back, I mean, this massive section you couldn't actually cast in one piece unless you had a 300 kilo pot, which we don't have. And uh, quite frankly, it's too dangerous for me. So each section was cast separately. So the arms, the log, the torso and then it's welded together using this TIG welder over here and then all the welds are then ground back they've been beaten with a hammer to blend in all these textures and to make good again so when you put a patina on there that all blends in and it looks like it's all been cast in one piece but actually it's weeks and weeks of fettling uh, casting and then putting it all together grinding it back and making it look like the original piece itself so last but not least we then get to the final stage which is patination and patination is using a heat and then chemicals to get your desired color and this is a piece that I finished uh, just after Christmas and we've got lovely different variations of colors and in order for me to get there, I heat the bronze up to a desired temperature and I use a spray bottle filled with chemicals or dioxides and I just basically use, use my brush, use my spray bottle to get these lovely patterns and to really bring those colours through and make that piece sing. Also, you've got these lovely areas which are highly polished bronze which I use a variety of wet dry sandpapers or uh, an auto sole metal polish. And these really come up really nice and shiny. So uh, that my friends is the patination stage. So gang, that about wraps it up and I hope you have a little bit more of an insight of what we do here. And on future videos, I'm gonna go into depth of the tricks and the tips and the, the mysteries behind casting and maybe some of the things that you've been struggling to do. Hopefully I can answer them uh, and make your casting experience a little bit better. But um, that about wraps it up guys, so that's it. I'm off.